In this video, we're going to be covering the Google Shopping product data feed best practices. Now, simply put, if one of your main goals this year or these upcoming years is to grow your e-commerce brand past $100,000, $500,000, even $1 million per month in revenue, then you should probably be focused on having the best possible product data feed with Google Ads. But exactly how is this done? Before we dive into the exact best practices, let's understand what makes the product data feed with Google Ads, well, the absolute best. So there's four different things we're going to be covering in this video, which actually directly imply whether your product data feed is following best practices or not. Number one thing is the overall health of your Google Merchant Center, whether your products are disapproved or not. Number two thing is the way the title of your products is laid out, believe it or not, whether they follow certain SEO strategies, all of that stuff. Number three, it's the descriptions and the way they're created and the way they're submitted. And number four, the most important thing I believe is the Google Merchant Center promotions, specifically what your brand is currently eligible for and what you are actually using. So let's start off with the first best practice on the list which has directly to do with the overall health of the Google Merchant Center account. I have here pulled up on the screen a Google Merchant Center account which recently got to face some issues with the overall health. Now, the way the overall health works is, how is the overall product data feed? Is it written with a bunch of different product disapprovals? Is the overall listings, not just the paid ones, but also the free listings, are they filled with all of these product errors? Exactly what is the overall health of your Google Merchant Center feed? Now, if we go on over to the product section, the diagnostic section, in the recent time period, this brand actually started to face a lot more issues when it comes to the product, specifically because this is, by the way, one of the brands I'm handling under my Google Ads agency or marketing, which if you're currently doing $40,000 or more per month in revenue, you need just a little bit of extra help scaling your brand to the next level. Go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can work together and make that happen. But this brand is under my agency. It started to face a lot of different issues when it comes to the overall product disapprovals, mainly because the CEO of this brand started to pause different products due to certain fulfillment issues. They started to make all of these random changes inside their policy pages, their product pages. And as a result, even if it's a very small, tiny, teeny thing that you change, if it has something to do with a certain policy that Google abides by and this change kind of starts to go against it, you're going to start facing a lot of different product disapprovals. So believe it or not, this is also the time when the product disapproval started when the results for this e-commerce brand started to tank. So if we go on over to marketing right here and actually not even marketing, we can just look at the performance dashboard and change the time period to the last 180 days. We can see when those product disapprovals started to really come about the overall traffic in terms of free traffic paid traffic it started to decline heavily and one of the main reasons is because impressions naturally started to drop i mean that's obviously gonna happen if your product merchant center feed starts to have all of these errors just come up all of a sudden and that too for some of your best selling products so this is what i refer to when i say the google merchant center feed and the overall health of the feed you want to make sure that your disapproval rates is as close to 0% as possible. So in the recent time period, specifically just a few hours ago, because today is the March 28th when I'm recording this video, we were able to fix all of those product disapprovals, at least majority of them, and bring it down from 8% disapproved to this 1% disapproved, which is a much, much better overall health for the brand compared to what it was before. And again, one of the best practices is to keep it as close to 0% as possible because this directly tells Google if you are following directions or not. And if you don't follow directions, well, it's gonna penalize your account. But this kind of naturally brings us to the second best practice you always want to follow when it comes to Google Ads, and that is the overall title strategy in terms of SEO technique. So if we go on over to the feed section right here, we can see there's only one specific feed submitted for this e-commerce brand. But one thing that we have done here very carefully is we have gone ahead and made the titles in a way that follows certain SEO techniques. Now, one of the most easiest strategies I'm following with and when it comes to the titles is having the brand name first at the very beginning, followed by keywords that relate to the product. And these keywords 
are words that we have searched up via the Google Keyword Planner tool. I have a whole video on this, which you can check out on my channel, so I won't go too in detail in that here, but the basic, basic strategy you wanna be following is having the brand name, preferably at the beginning, or if it's a newer brand, at the end, followed by the SEO keywords. This is one of the best practices I've learned to implement, regardless of the niche of the e-commerce brand, and that's exactly what we're following here. We're just making sure every single product here is following proper product titles, and with SEO techniques in place. Very simple, very straightforward. It's nothing more than just, again, the brand name followed by SEO keywords. And to find these keywords, it's best if you do proper keyword research and analyze them using certain KPIs. But this brings us to the third best practice we're using not only for this brand, for, for multiple brands, and that is the description strategy. Now, when it comes to the descriptions, I've always said this. Keep your description simple. And now with the invention of softwares like ChatGPT, Bard, so on and so forth, it has become even easier to make those perfect descriptions. But one thing I do recommend that you do give a go when it comes to following best practices for Google is to implement these SEO keywords, which you found for the title within the descriptions as well. But don't just go crazy putting a bunch of keywords in to your descriptions. That's a very good way to enter the black hat world and just basically become a red dot in Google's radar. And when that happens, that's when Google starts to penalize you for no apparent reasons. And it really starts to bring your overall results down. So instead, here's the best practice for the descriptions. You want to be implementing those SEO keywords individually, the good ones at least, no more than three times in the description. So for example, if this product here were the product 3D printer, and one of the main keywords was also 3D printer, I would incorporate the word 3D printer no more than three times within the description, preferably at the very start, in the middle, and then at the very end. Now, of course, like I've mentioned in my other videos, you can get ChatGPT or Bard to do this for you, at least initially when you're just sourcing a brand new product. Because once the product does start to sell, once it's showing good signs, that's when you really want to take things to the next level and implement in a product description writer who can focus on copywriting or do it yourself. But of course, if you don't have the proper copywriting skills, I don't recommend you do that. But that's the third best practice when it comes to the descriptions really helps you kind of put your description in the right positive light when it comes to Google's algorithm and a potential customer looking through your description and your landing pages. But this brings us to the final best practice, which I personally believe is one of the most important. And there's two steps to this. The first part is your eligibility to even be approved for the programs Google Merchant Center offers in the first place. Now, what do I mean by this exactly? If we go on to over to some of the programs right here, like for example, the shopping experience scorecard, the first really part of implementing best practices for a Google Merchant Center is to even be eligible in the first place for things like this. Now, of course, there's various things you need to do in order to be in eligible for things like these, such as having proper settings, having all the proper policies, like it says right here, having shipping options set up correctly, so on and so forth. But if you're not even eligible for some of these programs and this shop experience scorecard program is just one of them there's a whole bunch of different programs within the google merchant center which you should be looking into that just lets google's algorithm and the account itself know that you are not really that serious when it comes to scaling with google ads and as a result it's not really going to prefer your ads compared to your competitors who might be eligible for all of the programs available within the Google Merchant Center. So the first best practice is to become eligible for this. Again, via having the right settings, having the right kind of setup with policies, so on and so forth. But the second kind of part to this is actually to implement these programs. That's the second best practice. Again, there's a variety of different programs which are now available within the Google Merchant Center, such as the Shopping Experience Scorecard Program, the Automated Discounts Program. And if you could look further, there's promotions, there's the Google Shopping Reviews, and the list goes on and on. It's up to you as the CEO or CMO or just the marketing head of your e-commerce brand to ensure your brand is eligible for this number one and then actually using them properly. But implement these four best practices to really take your brand to the next level because right now when it comes to Google Ads, Competition is very fierce. You cannot just rely 
on your Google Ads strategy to scale your brand to the next level. These back end things that you do in order to be in the best light when it comes to Google's algorithm is really what's going to set you apart compared to your competitors. But again, if you don't have to worry about this, if you're doing 40k or more per month and you do decide to potentially work with me under my Google Ads agency for that, just go on my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see if we can even potentially work together to begin with. But I want you to watch this video right here on how I crack the Google Ads algorithm so you understand exactly how Google Ads works and why these best practices are so important.